Hi, this is Marwan and this is our second video about functions. In our first video, we have discussed parent functions and the domains and range. We were talking about six different types of functions. Now, in this video, we will start talking about transformation of functions and we will start with the vertical and horizontal shifts. How do they affect the graph of the function? As we can see in the cover page here, we have a quadratic function and a square root function. There will be another type of function that we're going to discuss. Our main goal is to clarify to you that all functions actually shift to the exact same way. Like there is the same rules that we're going to use for it, and we're going to write it all in the same function notation. So let's check what we have here. Now, as we can see here, the type of function we're going to be discussing is a quadratic function. The quadratic function, before we go through the rule, I want to show you the examples. Then we're going to go back and translate the rule so we understand better. Now, we have here two graphs. In the first one, we have the parent function, f of x equal x squared, which is a quadratic, and we know that already. And after transforming it to h of x, like we change f of x into h of x by adding 1, we just added 1. What happened to the function when we added 1? It moved 1 unit up. So each point has moved one unit upwards. Now, this is what we call a vertical shift. It has moved vertically. So instead of the vertex being here at 0, 0, it moved up to the point 0, 1. Okay? Now, let's look at the second graph we have. In the second graph, we still have the same parent function, the one in red, f of x equal to x squared, and it has shifted one unit to the right. I can see here like this purple graph has been shifted one unit to the right. Now, so instead of having the vertex at 0, 0, we have the vertex at 1, 0. So our vertex has moved here to 1, 0, and our vertex has moved here into 0, 1. So this is a vertical shift, only the value of y has changed, and this is a horizontal shift only the values of x has changed. Now, what do I want you to notice? Multiple things. The first thing is, in a vertical shift, I added the 1 away from x squared, like x squared is alone, and the 1 is by itself. While in the horizontal shift, the 1 is inside parentheses with x, and the square is outside. So not x squared alone, then minus 1, like we had here, x squared plus 1, no. The 1 or the constant is inside the parentheses with x and the square is outside. So it's kind of associated with x. What do I want you to see here? I want you to see that if the shift is a horizontal shift, like in this case, the number will be associated with x. It's going to be with x in the same parentheses and whatever signifies the uh, function is outside, like this function. It's a quadratic. It's signified by being squared. The square is outside and the constant is inside with x. While if it's a vertical shift, x squared is by itself and the number is outside. Okay? Now that we took that in consideration, let's look at the rule we have. The rule here says, let C be a positive real number, vertical and horizontal shifts in the graph of y equals f of x, the value of y of the function f of x are represented as follows. Vertical shift c units upwards. So if I want to move upwards, any types of units. h of x is going to be equal to f of x plus c. As you can see, f of x here, in this case, was x squared. So x squared plus c, which is x squared plus 1. So if I want to write that in function notation, I'm going to write that this is h of x which is equal to f of x, well, f of x here is x squared, so it's the same, and that's plus 1. So I know now from the function notation, this is the function notation, that h of x is a transformation of f of x by a vertical shift I moved upwards one unit. Let's look what we have next. Vertical shift c units downwards. Now, so I moved upwards, so I added. If I'm moving downwards, it's going to be minus. So if the parent function moves downwards, instead of writing plus 1 or plus 2 or plus whatever number of units, it's going to be minus that number of units. 
What about the horizontal shift? As I told you, the horizontal shift is always associated with x. So it's going to be f of x minus c inside the parenthesis. This means that it's a horizontal shift. Now, the thing that you need to look at when you're working with the horizontal shifts, that they are with the opposite sign. What does that mean? If I'm moving to the right, I don't add a number, no, I subtract. If I'm moving to the left, I add. Unlike the vertical shifts, you add when you're moving upwards, you subtract when you're moving downwards. For horizontal shifts, if you want to move to the right, you subtract. If you want to move to the left, you're going to add. I want to write this in function, function notation. It's going to be h of x, and that's equal to, and I'm going to write f, and open parenthesis, and inside I'm going to write x minus 1. So the function f of x, which is f of x equal to x squared, became f of x minus 1, and the square is outside. So this is writing the transformation in function notation. Okay? Now, I want also for you to see how did that affect the domain and the range of the function. We already know that f of x, the parent function here, so f of x has a domain of what? We have discussed that in our previous video. We said it's from negative infinity to infinity, which is all real numbers. However, the range was, it starts at 0 and ends at infinity. All real numbers from 0 to infinity. Now, but what about h of x? Now, in this case, this h of x, the domain will not be affected. Why? Well, you can't affect all real numbers by moving it any type of movement. Regardless now here, this is a vertical shift, so it does not affect the values of x. It only affects the values of y. So the only thing that will be affected here is the range. However, if your domain or range is all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity, you can never affect that. It can never be affected. You only can affect the restricted domains and range, which start as a specific number. Now, our range used to start from 0 to infinity. However, if I'm moving the whole function one unit up, it doesn't start from 0 anymore. It starts from 1 until infinity. So the range has changed because this is a vertical shift. Now, what about here? Will the domain change? Unfortunately not. The domain will not change. Well, horizontal shifts usually change the domain, but in this case, it won't because the domain is all real numbers already. Adding 1 or 10 or 100 to it will not affect it at all. So your domain is still the same, which is from negative infinity until infinity, and your range is also still the same. Why? Your range will not be affected because this is a horizontal, not a vertical shift. Now, the reason we took this example first, because quadratics are easier for you to understand, you saw what happens when it's a vertical shift, what happens in a horizontal shift. We understand that the vertical shift would affect the range, while the horizontal effect usually affects the domain unless it's from negative infinity to infinity. Let's look at another function. Now, this is a square root function. Again, I have a parent function, f of x equals square root of x, the same in both examples, I have different transformations. This is a vertical shift, this is a horizontal shift. Now, we should understand by now that to write that in function notation, it's not a problem. I know that h of x is going to be equal to f of x, and again, I added 1, so plus 1. And that plus 1 is outside, not associated with x here, because this is a vertical shift. While the horizontal shift here, I'm going to write h of x is equal to f of x. And here I added 1. So I know, as we discussed before in the horizontal shift, if you add 1, then you are moving not to the right, but to the left. So writing them both in function notation was not a problem. What am I going to discuss here? I'm going to discuss the domain and range. Will they be affected? Well, they should be. Why? Because I have a restricted domain and a restricted range. For f of x, we already know from our previous video that the domain was from 0 to infinity because you can't have a negative value under the square root. The range was also from 0 to infinity. So let's see what happens to the domain and range here. Now, it's a vertical shift. 
vertical shift will not affect the domain. It will not affect the values of x. They have not changed. They are still from 0 to infinity. But it will affect the range. Because the range, which is the values of y, won't start from 0 anymore. They will start from 1, the amount of units you have added to your parent function. So it is going to be from 1 until infinity. While in this case, the range will not be affected. What will be affected? The domain. Why the domain? Because the domain started from 0. When you shifted the function one unit to the left, you started from negative 1. So your domain will start from negative 1 until infinity. While your range will not be affected because this is a horizontal shift. So it will stay the same, which is 0 and infinity. Now, as you can see, the same rules we have applied to quadratic functions has been applied to the square root functions and still worked. Here we have rational functions. Now, does the same rule apply? Yes, it does. Exactly the same rule. Now, what happened here? I had the parent function f of x equals 1 over x. I added the 1 away from the 1 over x, so I know it is a vertical shift. So, this is h of x equal to f of x plus 1. I know it's a vertical shift, 1 unit up. While in this case, I had the 1 added where the x is. I have 1. It was 1 over x. It became 1 over x plus 1. So the same way the horizontal shift was associated in the quadratic function inside parentheses and the square is outside, or in the square root function where it was under the radical here in the rational function, it's going to be in the denominator. So I know that this is a horizontal shift. What type of horizontal shift is this? Well, I can tell that h of x has been moved, how much? One unit to the left. How do I know? Because I added one. Okay, so I know this is a vertical shift. I know this is a horizontal shift. How will the domain and range be affected? Well, for the parent function, f of x, I know that the domain, as we discussed in our previous video, was from negative infinity until zero, union zero to infinity. And I know that the range is the same, which is from negative infinity until 0, union 0 to infinity again. Well, what about these two functions? Well, the domain in this case, it's I know it's a vertical shift, so I know that domain will not be affected. So our domain is going to be the same from negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. So that's not the problem. Where is the problem? In the range. Because I had a vertical shift then the range has changed. If we look here, can you see this dotted line? We call this dotted line the asymptote. Why is it the asymptote? It shows where the limit of the function is. This function will not cross this line. Same way it happened here, as we discussed before, in rational functions. When you take rational functions in details, you will know that, well, it will never reach 0 in the parent function. Here, it will never reach 1 in the transformed function after it's shifted. So my range is going to be from negative infinity and instead of stopping at 0 as we did before, it's going to be from negative infinity until 1, union 1 to infinity. Because at 1 here is the asymptote or the line which puts the limits to the graph or like creates two different parts for the graph. Now, what about here? I know it's a horizontal shift, so it does affect the domain but not the range so how will my domain be affected it's from negative infinity of course where does it stop at negative one here because i moved the whole function from being at the y-axis i shifted it to the left one unit so it is until negative one union negative one to infinity what about the range no changes for the range it's the same as the parent function why because this is a horizontal shift from negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. Now, I have collected for you a group of questions that I want you to solve and write your answers in the comments. So you show me if you understood what we have discussed or not. Now, the first group of questions will require that you write an equation for each function, identify the domain and range, just by looking at the graph. You know what the parent function is? Show me how you're going to shift it. 
And for the second question, I want you to, for each of the following, identify the parent function, describe the transformation, like tell me it's shifted one unit to the right, or three units to the left, or how many units up, how many units down. And I want you to use function notation the same way we did to show me how uh, g of x or write g of x in terms of f of x. Now, that should not be a problem because we did the following. We have agreed that the rules of uh, shifting or transforming functions for all different types of functions we have discussed are exactly the same. We discussed three types, which are the quadratic, the square root, and the rational functions, but actually it does apply to the rest of the functions. It's the same for the absolute value function, it's the same for the cubic function, it's the same for the rest of the functions we have discussed in our first video. Now, all the graphs I have showed you in this uh, video were made by uh, the online graphing utility Desmos. I'm going to write for you uh, a link for it in the description in case you want to visit it yourself. Now, I hope this has been helpful for you and thank you so much for watching.